now, and I'm joined now by the US political journalist Laurie Laird. Laurie, welcome to the show. Thank you for waiting for that long press conference to reach its conclusion. Donald Trump, in no uncertain terms, saying, We live in a fascist state. He concluded by saying, November the 5th is the most important day in the entire history of America. What's your take? It was an interesting speech, and you, you mentioned that it's long. I was surprised. Sometimes Donald Trump can go on for 90 minutes or so. This was actually kind of succinct by a, by his recent history. What a speech, my word. Really difficult to keep up, very wide-ranging, including the fact that crime in Venezuela has gone down so much because apparently uh, all of the Venezuelan criminals are somehow have reached American shores, and, and criminals from the Congo as well. Really wide-ranging speech. But I think one thing to focus on and one thing to take a look at is that Daily Mail poll that he, mm. he proudly mentioned. Let, let, let's unpack that a little bit. He says he's up six points. What the poll measured was uh, it was a, a brief online poll of 403 people, not a huge sample size. And they were asked, do you have a more favorable opinion of Donald Trump after this conviction or a less favorable uh, view of Donald Trump. 22% had a more favorable view. 16% had a less favorable view. That is where that six point comes in. So it's a little bit misleading to say all of a sudden he's up by six points in some kind of matchup with Joe Biden. That's not quite what this micro poll was asking. So I think it's important to, uh, important to get that straight. That is an absolutely fair point. Um, and he did also mention, again, this rallying call of donations, $39 million, he said. And he was quick to point out this was in small amounts, so lots of people throwing their money into the pot in 10 hours. As you'd expect, once again, he's using this not only as a rallying point, as a sounding board, but also as a fundraising moment. That's what he does. Absolutely. And I think his campaign was a little bit worried about how he wouldn't be able to be out there during the time that the trial took place. He was in court four days a week. That does not seem to have affected his campaign in any, any way. I don't have any way of verifying whether those small donations were as high, accumulated to something as high as Donald Trump said. But I think something that's really important with fundraising here is that Wall Street, some of the big financial names on Wall Street are starting to move behind Donald Trump. He lost a lot of support after January 6th, and a lot of the big wigs on, on uh, the fat cats, whatever you want to call them on Wall Street, went a little quiet with their support. Front page of the Financial Times today, a big hedge fund manager, Bill Ackman, is saying, I am probably going to support Trump. And, and where Wall Street goes, some big money can follow. And Laurie, talking of Wall Street, we can see on our screens our live pictures from the streets of New York. There's a split crowd. There's somebody holding up a sign there saying, lock him up. There are some maggots, some Make America Great Agains, hanging from lampposts, shouting out. So we have those for and those against. And whatever you say about Donald Trump, he has that ability to mobilize America. I wanted to ask you, though, this key point, Laurie. Elections in, the, in Britain are won from the center. They're not won from the right, from the left. They're won by trying to appeal to the middle ground to the sensible conservative centrists. Do you think that those 34 chargers will put off the moderate voters or will they be um, pulled into this? Oh, no, it's the entire system against Trump. It's the judiciary. It's the politicians. Everything is against them. Where do you think the moderate votes will go on this at the moment? This, this is you. You pose such a good question. You're absolutely mm. right. This the rule of thumb is elections are won from the center. We're trying to see Keir Starmer here move toward the center with with with, with you know kind of mixed results here. Donald Trump is certainly not in the center, and he takes an entirely different strategy, doesn't he? Don't go to the center. Make sure that you rally your base. Forget about people who are in the center. Just shore up that uh, that group of people. Make sure that they get out and vote for you. Now, it didn't work in 2020, but it was tight, right? That was a very, very tight election. It could work this time around. And I think one of the things we'll be looking at is voter turnout. Some of those cohorts of people, young people, uh, ethnic minorities that came out in force for Joe Biden, will they come out for him this time around? Because he is going to need to, Biden is going to need to appeal to a wide, a very wide range to counter 
this great enthusiasm that Donald Trump has with his base, because you can be pretty sure that his supporters will turn out on November 5th. And just a quick apology to anybody watching on screen. There may have been some fruity language on that screen there. But back onto the conversation here, Laurie Laird. Of course, Donald Trump was very keen to steam into Joe Biden. He called him crooked Joe Biden again. He called him the dumbest, most incompetent. <laughs> Gary, there's some other offensive language on the screen there. We're just trying to keep those away. This is a live protest. We're doing our best to try and control it. Apologies if you saw some bad words there. It's live television after all. Back to Joe Biden. He said, crooked Joe Biden, the dumbest, most incompetent president we ever had. He called him the Manchurian candidate in the pocket of China. He said, I don't even think he knows what's being talked about. It's fun. But can I also ask you about that? Another huge thing being talked about in America is Joe Biden's mental capacity, his competence. Is that something else that you think Donald Trump will just keep nibbling away at? I absolutely. Look, that is a very easy way to go after Biden. I think we'll see much more of that sort of thing. It didn't help Donald Trump in the sort of mental acuity, you know, fitness, uh, fitness stakes when he seemed to nod off during his trial on a couple of occasions. But he does do very well at the podium. He is seems much more energetic than Joe Biden at the podium. That's a real risk for Joe Biden. It's an interesting Joe Biden is an interesting sort of paradox because he has got a lot of legislation through. Now, you may not agree with that legislation, but in terms of getting things through, shepherding things through Congress, he has a very, very good record. Economists might argue that these haven't been helpful things. Uh, perhaps that's another conversation. But he has been an effective president if you look at legislation, but he's not popular. The economy had been doing very well under Biden. People don't seem to recognize that. And in fact, we're getting some signs that the economy is starting to slow. This might be a problem for Joe Biden if he wasn't getting credit for a strong economy. Now we're seeing signs of a slowdown. We're probably not going to get an interest rate cut. This is another vulnerability for Joe Biden. But I think we've got to look. Don't look at the national polls, right? This election, because of the electoral system, will be decided in five or six states. Got to look at the polling in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. This is where this election will be decided. And Laurie, could I ask you about the gagging order? I mean, before the trial even began, Donald Trump was very, very personally attacked the judge, Juan Merchant, um, right from the first bat, before he even got in the courtroom. And now this judge holds the future, potentially, of the country in his hands if he decides because it's down to him. He's now responsible. He can decide whether Donald Trump is imprisoned or not. Now, Donald Trump, of course, will most likely Absolutely. appeal and try and push this back beyond November the 5th. So maybe it's a technicality. But if anybody thought today, maybe Trump's advisor said, you might want to go a bit easy on the judge. You're under a <laughs> gagging order. And yet... He was saying this guy is highly conflicted. He called him a tyrant. He said he might look like an angel, but actually he's a devil. Yeah, he uh, he really has had some choice words, not only for the judge, but for the judge's family as well. And I think this will form. There are a number of areas where, I, to my mind, what I've read, I'm not a lawyer, but a number of areas where there could be an effective appeal mounted. And I think one of the things Donald Trump's lawyers will do is look at the judge's daughter, who does work for a, a group of Democratic uh, operatives, and said that may be grounds for appeal. There are a number of other grounds for appeal that, to my mind, seem to be uh, quite feasible. You know, look, you can't appeal because you don't like like the, the decision, but you can appeal on the process. And there are a number of things that about this trial that were unusual. Most of all uh, was the implication, but the prosecution never pushed this too hard, that federal election law had been broken in uh after these business uh, business records were falsified. That's the reason they were falsified. This mixing and matching of state and federal law is unusual. I don't think it's been tried very often before. That could be grounds for appeal. But we won't know they have the uh, prosecution has 30 days to file an appeal. They almost certainly will. Uh, and that appeal will start to wind its way through the system. July 11th, 
That's D-Day for the sentencing. It would be unusual. I don't think legal experts think that Donald Trump will be behind bars. He's old, although, he, although less old than Bill Biden, as he keeps reminding us. These are not this falsification of business records. Yeah. Oh, Laurie Laird, we seem to have lost signal there, Marin. No I was, I was about, we, we, We've got it back. Laurie, can I quickly ask you, of course, Donald Trump's many... We still have you, lovely. Of course, Donald Trump's one of his many, many critics across politics and the media will be delighting at the decision, 34 counts, all guilty. Um, a lot of celebrities, Robert De Niro, George Techie, the usual suspects are doing a tap dance in merriment. And yet... It looks like there'll be this appeal. The money is coming in. On the balance of history, the balance of how things have gone before, how do you think this will play out with the electorate, with the body of people watching across America now? Is this going to give Trump a boost or is it going to give him a vote down? You know, I don't think it plays either way. I know we want to talk about something more exciting than that, but I think it will further energize his base, which is already pretty energetic. Anyway, I don't think, you know, we saw polling a couple of months ago, if he's convicted, what, what will your support do? And there was, there did seem to be a polling drop in support, but I'm not sure that that will happen. I think the big risk here is that voters on both sides may get turned off by the entire process. But I don't think that this hurts Donald Trump all that much, if at all. Yeah, I mean, as he said there, in his usual um, self-deprecatory way, November the 5th is the most <laughs> important day in the history of America. He's quite clearly saying the entire future of the nation depends on that date. In 30 seconds, Laurie Laird, do you think he's got a point? Yeah, I do think he has a very good point, but not for the reasons that he thinks so. I think one of the key things, the legacy of Donald Trump, is that he has sown distrust in the judiciary system in the U.S. He has sown distrust in the electoral system. And we have a significant minority of Americans who do not believe in these institutions anymore. And that's troubling. OK, superb stuff. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Laurie Laird, expert analysis okay. there, U.S. political journalist. What a day in New York. Donald Trump addressing the nation from Trump town. Wow, he came out.